at Parallel Carbon, we're building a direct air capture technology that because of how it is designed, it has the added benefit of not only being able to do the carbon removal, but we're also producing carbon negative hydrogen. So we put it in a system, we put the energy, we generate the acids and bases, and at the same time, and with the same amount of energy, we're also producing clean hydrogen. What brought you to work in climate? Well, I decided to work in climate because I realized that there were so many issues before. You're listening to Bite Size Climate Tech, Season 3. We're on. Nice. We're at the venue of the drop. So I have the CTO of Parallel Carbon. Oh, hi. My name is Aranza Carbona, founder and CTO of Parallel Carbon. She's going to tell me about the technology behind Parallel Carbon. Exactly why it's called Parallel Carbon and what do you do? Yeah, of course. So at Parallel Carbon, we're building a direct air capture technology that because of how it is designed, it has the added benefit of not only being able to do the carbon removal, but we're also producing carbon negative hydrogen, which really gives us the added benefit that we're not only carbon removal but also providing a solution for decarbonization so that's why we're doing it in parallel how is the process done okay so we have two main cycles to say it in a way like the first cycle that is the director capture one is the way that we're removing the co2 from the air we're doing it by using well, like abundant minerals abundant minerals that love to absorb the co2 from the air like a little sponge but of course those minerals are not like as easy squeezable as a sponge they really love that co2 oh. So you have to do something really harsh to say in a way to take it out. Other technologies, other companies, what they do is that they use very high temperature or very low pressure that are really abrasive, but require a lot of energy and they have to be running continuously. What we're doing is that we're doing something that is called a pH swing. So basically, if you imagine, it's something similar as happens when you drink a lot of coffee and then your stomach gets a little bit upset, too much acid, and then you take an anti-acid to neutralize a little bit what's happening in your stomach. And then as a result of that, you maybe burp a little bit. So we're doing something very similar. We put those minerals that already have the CO2, we put them in a tank, we put a concentrated acid first, we remove the CO2 as a gas, we trap it, we store it permanently, and then we add a base, and that base allows us to obtain little particles again that are our mineral that we put all over to the decarbonation. That's one bit. And the second bit and how we're producing the hydrogen mm -hmm. is how we're obtaining these acids and bases. The way that we're obtaining it is that we're breaking the water molecule by using a little bit of energy something that is called water electrolysis. Yeah. So, so we put it in a system, we put the energy, we generate the acids and bases, and at the same time, and with the same amount of energy, we're also producing clean hydrogen. That's amazing. So you basically have this process. It's one process to produce two things. Exactly, yeah. There's other people who are also doing the same thing, but how is yours better? Uh, what's the unique part of your technology? Yeah, of course, I would say that there's many different parts of our technology that are working slightly better. The first one is that because we're using this water electrolysis system, compared to, like as I mentioned, the high temperature, low pressure, we can run our system intermittently. So that means that we can run it when the renewable power is available. Okay. That these processes with high temperature, low pressure, unfortunately, they can't. Oh. So that's the first. The second is that because how we, all of our chemistry is interacting, we can do the carbon removal four times faster than technologies that are similar to ours. And last but not least is the way that we design the technology is that we're using widely available chemicals. So we're taking advantage of existing supply chains mm -hmm. will we really allow us to scale up a, a lot faster than other technologies that are using new exciting chemistries. So the chemicals is what you use in the pH swing, is it? Yeah, exactly. Well, the chemicals, it's first like the minerals that we're using to remove the carbon that we're using basically limestone. Oh, that's something okay. that is widely yeah, available yeah, all over yeah. the world. It's very cheap and we're not competing with other technologies that really require it. And then, of course, it's the acids and bases that we're producing with the clean hydrogen. How would you explain this to an eight-year-old? I would say that it's a little bit of that, like uh, what happens with this antiacid and the thing in the stomach. So basically, as we breathe, we remove CO2 from the air. And in that way, we clean what is around us. Like that's what the system basically does. But in order to take that CO2 and put it away, we do a similar process that was happening in our stomach. But the great thing is that these acids and bases that we could take as a, as a pill or that they're happening in our stomach, we use a little bit of electricity to break it. Like you neutralize the thing. Exactly. If that is, uh, analogy is appropriate. For example, when you're drinking coffee, it's too bitter. And then you add a little bit of sugar so then you can take it. Something like that. It could be a little bit similar. 
like the chemistry, it's a little bit different, but yeah, it's, it's a little bit in that way. That yeah. you utilize two things to make it something a little bit more, to say in a way, friendly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You answered a question from a previous guest. So when do we start introducing, not just fully focusing on decarbonization and start to also focus on carbon dioxide removal at the same time? Oh. Or do we finish the job with decarbonization first okay. and then switch into, into, into carbon okay. dioxide removal? I think that that has to be simultaneous. I think that we have to do a huge effort to really decarbonize everything that it's around the industry, what we're building, what we're doing. But at the same time, we have to do the carbon removal. Like it, one needs to live with the other. And that's a little bit of what we're building in Parallel Carbon. We're really looking to do both things in parallel at the same time. And I believe that not only us as a, as a startup, but the whole industry should look into doing both at the same time. And what question do you want to leave for the next guest? I would say thinking about the technology that you're building, if you couldn't work in that technology anymore, what other technology within the climate tech would you like to be working at? My final question, what brought you to work in climate? Well, I decided to work in climate because I realized that there were so many issues. Before, I used to be working in DuPont uh, for the regulatory team for the pesticides portfolio. And I realized that the problem uh, and how climate is affecting developing countries is really difficult. And, they, and the most affected are the ones that have the least amount of resources. So I really wanted to do something to help. I'm originally from Mexico. So I wanted to work on something that could really have a real impact and benefit the especially developing countries and developing societies. Great. Let's, Let's make, make climate, climate cool, cool again. again. High five. Yay. <laughs>